Greetings. Today, we present an exceptional opportunity for you to consider. We cordially invite you to embark on a profound journey, a transition towards spiritual enlightenment that could reshape your understanding of the world. In this video, you will hear a passage titled Reflections of Self from the book The Journey Begins Within by Savvy. Together, these teachings emphasize the importance of recognizing our judgments as reflections, engaging in introspection, and fostering unconditional love and acceptance to achieve spiritual growth and unity. In this video, you will learn 1. Judgment as Reflection Our judgments of others reflect aspects of ourselves that need healing. Unconditional love and acceptance are the keys to escaping this cycle. 2. Introspection and Inner Work True wisdom and self-improvement come from introspection, forgiveness, and aligning with the truth within ourselves. 3. Duality and Oneness Understanding that we are all one in spirit helps us heal ourselves and others by recognizing the shared divine essence. 4. Self-realization and spiritual practices. Awakening to our true identity eliminates the need for external spiritual practices, as the truth resides within us. 5. Non-judgmental awareness. Achieving a non-judgmental state signifies resolving inner conflicts which allows us to help others on their spiritual journeys. 6. Service to others. Serving others unconditionally and sharing spiritual wisdom enhances our own spiritual growth and connection with the divine. 7. Inner peace and higher awareness. Attaining inner peace and higher awareness involves questioning societal norms and seeking the light within. I hope you enjoy it. See the video description for additional details. Reflections of the Self How our judgments of others reflect back on us. A grand game of hide-and-seek is going on, what we judge others on is the root of duality in our existence and, in a way, is pointing the way to our self-healing, as we can only recognize what we know to be true within ourselves in others. There is only one antidote and shortcut to escape this relentless game, which, although you may think you can temporarily win by avoiding situations, will eventually come back to haunt you with a vengeance. Unconditional love and acceptance halt the simulation, and are the master keys to unlocking the lesson and progressing to the next one. I'm giving you the lesson's conclusion at the beginning of the passage, but I know that many, if not all, will not grasp its meaning, as it takes effort and introspection to unlock this wisdom. Again, I provide knowledge based on my understanding, which is the Gnostic realization of knowledge. I can't impart wisdom. You must seek it on your own. As I always state, you must perform the inner work of introspection, forgiveness, seeking, aligning with the truth, and opting to embody light, not darkness. Remember, there is no absolute right or wrong. It is what we determine within our scale of values. Now, you might argue that this assertion is incorrect and that behaviors like genocide, suicide, murder, violence, rape, etc. are all wrong. Indeed, on my scale of values and wisdom, I find no value in any of the mentioned situations. Yet from a Gnostic perspective, knowing that we are indestructible and our consciousness moves on to other realms after our death, I can understand why some souls might need to experience said conditions to learn firsthand not to embody these energies again. Once you learn to love unconditionally, you realize the magic and great gift behind each life and the sanctity of the spirit inhabiting each being. I never speak to the other person's ego from my heart when conducting in-person interventions. I always reach out to the part of me trapped in the individual in front of me, as I know that we are all one in spirit and that there is no other than me within everyone else. This approach allows me to quickly transfer the spiritual lesson I've already attained through my journey and distill it into wisdom, much like two resonating tuning forks. In other words, by utilizing the shortcuts of the simulation that I've already mastered on prior levels, I can easily reach into the core of the being in front of me and heal the savvy residing within them. As I have already done the work, it is child's play to bestow the magic and be the cure for others. The more I develop myself the more layers I unlock within my reality, and the more I can serve others. The more I freely give of myself, the more I receive back from the universe, 
in an ever-expanding cycle contrary to the law of entropy in physics. Indeed, in this case, the universe is moving from a lower state of energy and disorder to a higher level of energy and divine order. Go figure that one out, scientist. There is always an exception to all your postulates. Sorry, I couldn't resist myself as I giggled while writing this sentence. All I know is that I don't know anything, and with this humility, I share my observations with you all. So, you may ask, how you can work on yourself and improve and what the first step on this introspective path is? Reality is constantly beckoning you to embark on this journey, but we need to be more relaxed and focused on our lives, whether purposely or not. We are surrounded by distractions like cell phones, TVs, computers, stimulants, alcohol, drugs, sex, etc., even to begin to confront reality for what it is. One must perform a hard reset and create the space for contemplation. I do not necessarily recommend any spiritual practices, as once you know the truth, you realize that they are not ends in themselves, but a means to an end, and that the essence of who you are is immutable from the beginning of time. As I've been explaining, you can also pray all you want to a God outside of you, but that also can be in vain as the truth is waiting for you inside you. Once you awaken to your true identity, there is no need for any spiritual practice, prayer, or religion. There is only the choice of being in communion with our essence. Our union between our soul or spirit with our Heavenly Father, or falling back to sleep in the slumber of the 3D simulation. This is the most accurate way i found to describe it. Our choices concerning the food we eat, the drinks we consume, and the space we hold can open or close the portal within us for this awakening communion. Now I'll be the first to admit that I have had extensive periods of this communion, also known as Enlightenment, during which the majority, if not all, of the revelations in my written passages have come. However, let me reiterate that there is nothing special about me and what is within me, and these states of heightened consciousness are attainable by every human being who ever walked this earth. I've been fortunate to have suffered enough to be left with no choice but to do the inner work. Knowing what I am, I must share this with everyone willing to listen— because it is the next step in my spiritual evolution. Serving others is serving myself. Loving everyone unconditionally with no judgment is loving myself and appreciating every aspect I observe in others. The power for construction or destruction exists within humanity, and we can co-create or co-destroy. We can serve the light or the darkness, including me. I could wake up one day disconnected from my higher self and become judgmental and emotional. Generally, these days, which occur more sparsely now than before, are the beacon of light drawing my attention to unresolved wounds or areas in myself that need work and unconditional love. This leads me to the key I have been trying to share so far. Everything you see outside of you in the mirror of your brother or sister standing across from you reflects facets of your being that need integration. Whatever still triggers you in your daily interactions is the resistance within, pointing you towards aspects of yourself that you must confront. Once you can be non-judgmental, it signals that you have finalized the work related to that aspect within yourself. You will understand that whatever is happening for the others before you is perfect and complete in their spiritual journey, and that the simulation allows them to address themselves. You can choose to be a silent observer, allowing them to experience what they must, or, if you notice that they are kind-hearted and ready to overcome their blind spots, you could intervene and share your spiritual wisdom, helping them evolve to your level of awareness. Refrain from thinking that this is not an iterative game. Once you have gained understanding, you must demonstrate your mastery of the universe by tackling the lessons head-on in your journey. You will be tested on the gifts revealed until you truly become a sensei, a term for a teacher or instructor, typically in Japanese martial arts. It means a person born before another or 
one who comes before. This is the key to understanding that we are all one, overcoming similar spiritual lessons in our ascension to become one with our Heavenly Father. This is the missing key in all religions, one that they never disclose because they aim to control rather than empower you. Conversely, I am here to guide you to the relativity of everything you once believed to be accurate and share my journey to the ultimate truth. Throughout my recent development stages, I have repeatedly sought to understand the ultimate truth. As I've already explained, over 200 days before this writing, I was given quite the answer one random day at noon while in the Ionian Sea. For what seemed like all of eternity, condensed into a few minutes, I experienced the complete communion of my consciousness with that of our Heavenly Father. I was shown Gnostically what Jesus Christ came to share with us over 2,000 years ago. Much of the awareness revealed during this communion is for my knowledge only regarding my journey. However, I can attest that everyone reading this can attain the same if they genuinely embark on the journey within. As the veil began to lift between the ethereal realms and my reality, the explorer and adventurer in me couldn't resist but embark on the ultimate adventure. Although the material aspects of life are always appealing, they are merely temporary, even more so than us. I decided that I would make this lifetime count, and if I was put on this earth for a purpose greater than my professional titles and career, it was time for me to must up the courage to explore the full potential of this purpose. Hence, the writings typically come to me after a 24-hour fast between 3.30 a.m. and 5 a.m., which are the hours when the content flows from me to the paper without even having to focus on a single thought. This lesson has been pressing me for the past 48 hours as snippets of awareness come to me daily. This morning, I was awoken at 3.35 a.m. and decided that if I was to have any peace, I needed to start writing what was trying to come through me. So, reverting to where we started. If you judge a situation or someone you will encounter this repeatedly until you finally understand that what you are judging and resisting is an unresolved aspect within yourself. Either you realize you have the potential to commit the same act or circumstance, or you can't reconcile it with your notions of right and wrong. You can't love others or yourself unconditionally if you maintain any prejudices. The labels you create to guide your ego through life are all fictitious. The truth is that nothing exists outside of your labels. Unfortunately, we are taught to attach labels to everything from birth, which is how we are shaped and made to conform to society. In our education, we are encouraged to fit into even narrower bands of identity to serve the industrialized world according to the Prussian educational system. The Prussian education system refers to the system established in Prussia due to the educational reforms in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, which has had a widespread influence since then. The Prussian education system was introduced as a fundamental concept in the late 18th century and was significantly expanded after Prussia's defeat at the early stages of the Napoleonic Wars. The Prussian educational reforms inspired similar changes in other countries, and remain crucial to understanding contemporary nation-building projects and their consequences. The Prussian education system's emphasis on obedience, rigid class-based stratification, centralized control with standardized curricula, and narrow focus on industrialization have been criticized as significant shortcomings that persist in modern education systems influenced by this model. These flaws have raised concerns about stifling creativity, perpetuating socio-economic disparities, limiting local autonomy and innovation, and failing to adequately prepare students for the demands of a knowledge-based economy that requires critical thinking, adaptability, and a broader range of skills beyond technical training. This is why I am taking the time to shed light on these matters, elevate our awareness, and assist you in reaching a higher state of consciousness. It will enable the right decision-makers to question the normal, the systems and themselves, to find alternative means to run society. We are achieving better than we once were. Unfortunately, what worked yesterday does not work today, 
and it's time we all awaken and shift our perceptions instead of inflicting the same damage on each other generation after generation. All my writings don't imply an answer. They highlight flaws in our rationality, our interaction with reality, and ourselves and others. We can't force anything on anyone. We are not meant to be the ones dictating how to save the world, as the world doesn't need saving. We can be catalysts for change within ourselves and start embodying the light once we find it. By tirelessly shining this light within us, we can instill better ways of interacting, socializing, gathering, and achieving in humanity. But we must lift our heads from the daily chores and concentrate on finding this light within us to reach our maximum potential within our lifetimes. Evolution and change are intrinsic to our reality, and resisting is futile. We either grow and adapt to what the environment demands or perish. Collectively, we have served our purpose and are no longer needed. Nature is perfect in many ways that might be considered brutal by human standards. However, we can learn a lot by observing how other animal species interact within themselves and the environment. We're not above nature, and even if we create our concrete jungles, we can't escape the inherent realities encoded in our DNAs and how these survival mechanisms dictate our behaviors. We can only harness opportunities that might otherwise go unnoticed in our constant quest for survival by attaining higher awareness and presence of mind. This passage has a lot to digest, but again, all these points come through me as I write to draw your attention to aspects of your existence that you have yet to delve deeper into. Whatever you resisted in this writing points to an opportunity for you to look within and ascertain why. And what is bothering you? That may be the whole point of this exercise, to help you question yourself, your beliefs, and what you have been taught during your entire life is accurate, but it isn't the only way to approach things. Please find time for introspection away from distractions and cultivate a habit of seeking silence in your busy life in which you disconnect and start journeying within yourself to find the answers to everything happening outside of you and once you start seeing everything for what it truly is, it becomes easy. Remember what I initially stated. The only solution is acceptance and unconditional love if you aim to overcome the simulation level. There isn't anything to impose on others. You only need to love yourself, and the rest will flow naturally, as we are all but one. If the content moves you, we invite you to embark on your journey by purchasing a copy of the book at Amazon, Kindle, or iBook today. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, keep exploring. The journey begins within. Click like and subscribe for additional details. See the video description.